What's up guys, it's Alex Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of The Hand of the Day, bringing you this one from the Hilton Hotel in Waikoloa in the Big Island. That's right, I'm the Big Island. It's friggin' amazing, highly recommend you see it. Sorry I got my islands mixed up. Uh, anyway, I'm bringing you this hand. I'm focused on the, the poker action here. Uh, anyway, this hand comes from Kevin, one of my readers. Uh, he's playing 2-5 no limit, and he finds himself in a precarious spot. So, under the gun plus two opens with a $700 stack to 25, in a live poker game. So it's a big open, but you're playing live poker. People generally open bigger, stacks are deeper. So I wouldn't read too much into the, the relative hand strength of the guy based on his sizing. Under the gun plus three calls. He should have a pretty strong hand here to call an under the gun plus two open with you know five X open. He should have something that is decent, that plays well post flop. I would keep that in mind. And our hero Kevin is on the button with seven five off and somehow decides to miraculously call, which I really, really don't like. Kevin, you're my boy, thanks for supporting, appreciate you being my fan, but this call is very bad. You have a hand that is not good enough to play post-flop, it's not suited. Uh, I'm okay with calling here if it's suited and you're really deep, you have the button, that's fine, but 7-5 off is just too weak. But anyway, you decide to call, you guys go three ways to the flop. Flop comes ace-5-3 with a flush draw, so you flop middle pair, backdoor straight draw, Razor checks, caller checks, now it's on you, you decide to check. I guess I'm okay with checking here. There's some good turn cards, you can maybe call a bet on the turn, that's fine. It's sort of just a sticky hand to play, it's a tough spot to play. Let's assume you had something like 7-5 suited. I might decide to bet here. When the under the gun Razor checks the flop, it looks like he has something like kings or queens, jacks tens, maybe he just has air, queen jack suited, whatever. And when the caller checks to the button, it's not that likely he has something either. Of course, if these players are really balanced and they're tricky, they're thinking on multiple levels, maybe they're gonna check some strong hands here, etc., etc. that's fine. But in a general 2-5 game, people play a little bit too ABC in spots like this. So I know I'm generalizing here, but at this point, I think you, you might get it through with a C bet. And if you add that up with the fact that you could potentially bluff diamond cards on the turn, you could rep some flushes, or you could pick up a straight draw or two pair of trips on the turn. I think I like a bet here to try and win this hand. The original Razor is probably gonna fold even if he has something like Queens because he has a player behind him and he has you to worry about. There's not that many good turn cards for his hand. You might get away with murder with your seven five off. Anyway, you decide to check and we go three ways to the turn. Turn comes an offsuit ace. Checks to you again on the button and now it's pretty likely your hand is good. If the original Razor had something like Queens or Kings, after it gets checked around on the flop, again, pairing the ace on the turn, making it less likely that anybody has an ace, Logic says he probably would bet with something like Queens or Kings to get value and to protect his hand. The original caller almost definitely doesn't have anything because after the Razor checks, he has even more incentive to, to bet, so he probably has nothing either. I think your hand is good a decent amount of the time, and you could just bet, get to a cheap showdown, and play a very straightforward pot on the river. So you bet 40, the original Razor calls, which means you're probably beat, you're almost definitely beat, and now the original caller makes it 155. At this point, you decide to call. Now, you have to be thinking on like some super high level and hoping some great plan here works in order for this to successfully profit for you. You're basically hoping that you're gonna call here, the original Razor is gonna fold queens or kings or jacks, and not an ace, he's always gonna call with an ace. So you're basically hoping that the first guy's bluffing, the other guy is gonna fold queens or kings and he doesn't have an ace, and that your hand holds up on the river or that you don't get bluffed. So this is like super ambitious, best case scenario what I'm saying, and I still don't even like it. So I would definitely fold here. That being said, you called, we have to play the hand anyway. Now the original Razor preflop, who called the $40, makes it 355 on the turn cold so at this point the other guy folds and now it's back on you now you wrote into me in your email saying i can't think about what this guy could possibly have it doesn't make sense that he would check the flop and then check the turn with these ace combos and whatever so he's either either as you know the nuts or he's bluffing so i'm gonna call so you call here on the turn but i really really don't like it in this spot i mean first of all this is one of the worst hands you could have so you, you have enough better hands that you can call the turn with Maybe you could bluff catch the turn with something like ace suited that checked the flop and now has trips 
and you block some of the nutted hands that your opponent could have. That might be like a reasonable way to proceed here. Something like, okay, you have ace-10, it's less likely your opponent has ace-5 or ace-3 for a boat, etc., etc. I get it that you you block fives full, I guess. I'm like trying to look for the positive here, but I still think this is just way, way too ambitious here. Uh, this is, you know, honestly a little bit reckless, I think, to call here on the turn. And then I don't know what your plan is for the river. I guess the guy put in half his stack on the turn, so you're thinking, well, he can't really bluff me here, so I'm gonna call the turn and then, you know, he's just so likely to shut down. But I just think it's way too ambitious, right? So anyway, I would fold the turn here. As played, you decided to call, and we go heads up to the river. The river comes a 10 of clubs, so the, the draws miss, and your opponent shoves all in for $310, which is like, you know, less than half the pot, a third of the pot, whatever. So he makes a really small shove here on the river after you call the turn. Now it's important to, con to keep in mind the logic process throughout this hand. Maybe your opponent could have been bluffing. Let's, let's go with that hypothesis there. Let's run with that logic. Let's say your opponent's bluffing the turn. After you call the turn, you call 365 on the turn. The range of hands that you could call the turn with changes dramatically. It gets a lot narrower and it gets a lot stronger. So your opponent shouldn't change his strategy on the river because of the fact that you called the turn. Let's face it, it looks like at the very, very least, you have three aces with probably a good kicker to call the turn here. And it's really unlikely that you're gonna fold that for less than a half pot bet on the river when it's a complete blank and all the draws miss. So your opponent would be suicidal to be bluffing here. And a good way to keep this perspective in mind is think about it. What would you do if you were in your opponent's spot? Would you ever bluff here? Probably not, because it's just suicidal. You can easily have a boat, which is very likely given how you played the hand, or at the very worst, like I said, aces, three aces with a strong kicker that's probably gonna call the river just because you're stubborn, the pot's so big. So I don't think my opponent's ever folding here, and if I got to the river in this spot, I'm going to just probably fold if I have like three aces with a weak kicker. Probably just gonna let it go because it's so unlikely my opponent's bluffing, but definitely with 7-5, which is the absolute worst hand you can ever have here, I would let this go on the river if I did call the turn. Because I think the hands your opponent's gonna bet with on the river get even narrower. That being said, you're, you decide to call and we go to showdown. Your opponent has quad aces, which uh, is, is possible. It's not so super surprising. I think you're, you're, it's the best hand you could have, obviously, as the nuts, but I think you're gonna get shown a boat here a lot if you don't get shown quads. Maybe at the worst, you're gonna get shown ace king for like some crazy thin value that your opponent was going for. That's, I think, the worst hand you could have. Anyway, not a great call, my friend. Uh, Kevin, I love you. I hope you stay my reader. I hope you stay subscribed to my channel. Uh, don't, don't, don't be mad. Don't kill the messenger. But these are just my thoughts. Anyway, leave me your thoughts with a comment below this video. Subscribe and like it if you enjoyed this video. Putting out more content soon from Hawaii and elsewhere around the world. I hope you enjoyed this hand of the day. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.